Welcome back to His and Hers Movie Podcast. This is episode number 62, featuring a recap of our April Ghoul's Drive-In Monsterama, as well as a little feature review of In the Earth. Into the Earth? Into Earth? In the Earth. In the Earth, buddy. In the, In the Earth. earth. Um, it is May 4th at the time of recording this, 2021, of course. Um, you're actually going to get two back-to-back episodes because we've been putting off pods lately, oh. and we like to put off pods. Yeah, but then we get punished, and now we have to do two pods! Yeah, we have a lot of stuff that we watched and different things that had happened, so it's like we need to, we need to catch up, if you will, so... Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing two episodes back-to-back. We're going to record them both tonight. Um, you'll probably hear them a couple days apart. But, yeah, uh, May 4th here, we watched we watched, <laughs> we watched, watched In the Earth like a, mo- like a half a month ago. Um, or maybe even longer, like three or four weeks ago, I think. So, I don't know. I don't know how that'll be. But, I um, forgot all about it until you said, we still have to do In the Earth. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm one half of your hosting duo for this uh, part one in a two-part double episode of Shravaganza. Uh My name is JP. Joining me tonight, as always, is Carly. Um, what's going on since we've been putting off pods? First of all, you're not saying the extravaganza thing correctly. I, I appreciate that you're going along with it, but you haven't been saying it the right way. What do you mean? You've been enunciating, you've been uh, enunciating the wrong, or putting emphasis upon the wrong vowel, I believe. It's extravaganza! (laughs) Okay. Secondly, um, I don't even remember when we last recorded, because it's been a grip. It was probably the week before we went to the drive-in, because we were going to record on that sat at after the drive-in, but we said F it because we were tie-haired and didn't really have the time, so Mm -hmm. that feels like a long time ago at this point. Um, So I need to start keeping a diary of what happens in my life between pods, because I don't remember anything. It's all blur. I've been working a lot um, pretty much every day. I work kind of late into the day. Uh, I mean, Monday's horrible. It's like until... 9 p.m. I'm out, but then the other days aren't that bad. It's like I get done by like 6, and uh, so that's been, you know, I've been getting good overtime, but I haven't been able to watch many moves, and you'll see that when we get to what we watched. I really legit have not watched much of anything recently. It's probably been the like longest stretch of not watching that much that I've been on in a long, long time, but at the same time, it is okay, because as you all know, I sometimes get burnt out on move watching, so it is what it is. Um, pretty much just been prepping for 05 show at this point that records on Friday, and um, that's about it, uh, other than the things that we've been, you know, obviously we saw the drive-in and things we see in the theater. I haven't been watching much on my own, or for fun, if you will, so that's kind of been... That's kind of been my life lately, just work and work. What about you, buddy? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I've been prepping for 05. I'm just, I'm honestly so done with it. Yeah. I just had to watch enough to beat Jeremy in that bet, which I, I have completed by this point with room to spare. It, um, but I just, I don't know, man. I just... There's so many Asian movies that came out this year, too, that I'm just not really... Like, not, there's very few that seem, like, super great. Like, you know how some years, like, I think of 2002, like, every Asian movie I watched in 2002 was, like, a banger, right? Like, Dark yeah, Water, like... and The Eye, and Phone, and um, mm-hmm. Juon, to a lesser extent, and, like... There's I not a single like... Juon movie this year, somehow. That's, like yeah <laughs> i feel like there's one every year in the t- i don't know when we first got the year and you guys were all like oh there's so many asian films i was excited because i like asian films but i agree i think 
most of them are very mediocre. Like One Miss Call Part 2, is like a lot of them are feel low budgets. I watched One Miss Call 2 and then The Ghost of May Knock was super, I think that's how you say it. That was very low budgets. Uh, freaking The I-3, that was just pure comedy and it wasn't my type of comedy. I could see why some might enjoy it, but yeah, it's the, the, even the Asian films are disappointing. I was all about this year at first, but it got to a point where I was at a standstill and there was nothing, it feels like there's nothing I can really grasp at that would be a gem, where in previous years I get burnt out at the end and I still manage to find something, but I feel like I already know that I watched all the good stuff, you know? Yeah. Yes. So... so. Yeah, mostly watching 05 movies and um, prepping for the podcast that, you know, we had before, like the Return of Living Dead one and stuff. I think we might record it after that. We were supposed to do one more episode, but I had a bit of a family. It, I've actually had a really rough, like, past, like, month, personally, on a personal level, um, yes. which you know about, but... Yeah, it's been really, really rough. I've had I've, just one thing after another. It just, like, never ends. Um, but, yeah. So, with that said, uh, I guess we shouldn't waste too much time here. Let's uh, get into some things that we watched and some other stuff like that. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, first one here is Id from 2005. Um, this is a, um, is it Korean or, uh, Jap Japanese, it's Japanese. Um, this is a weird, weird movie. Um, basically, um, it's like Nightmare Logic, um, just a complete batshit crazy type of movie where you're the whole time you're watching it, you're like what the hell is going on um it's repulsive and filthy and gross and nasty uh i didn't really know what to make of it um it's one of those things where like i would need to watch it again and considering i watched it like a half a month ago <laughs> it's not doing much for my review but um i gave it like a seven out of ten um and then i watched chaos or sorry, no, I watched Mother's Day from 1980. Um, this was part of Joe Bob's last drive-in. And it was the first episode back for season three, which featured guest appearance uh, via like Skype type of Zoom call, uh, Eli Roth. And they go, they show Mother's Day, which is a really fun um, slasher film from the 80s. Uh, we've watched it at the drive-in. Um, yes. I've seen it a couple times. It's pretty good. And it gets better with each watch, I think. It's kind of ridiculous. I think it was Troma um, produced. And Eli Roth has a lot of cool insight on the movie. But yeah, that's uh, Mother's Day. Solid, like, 7.5, 8 out of 10. Um, then we have Chaos from 2005. This is a remake of The Last House on the Left. Um, now, when I seen everybody talking about this one, like, I had no idea this existed until Dave Parker was telling me about it when we were talking about 05 movies. And I was like, oh, really? I did not know they remade Last House on the Left. Um, it started as an official remake of Last House on the Left, and then I think they dropped it and they just released it with like out connection but there's there's like some of the characters are named the same stuff and things like that so um it's sort of like a it's definitely a remake um i think some of the characters are named the same are they not they might not be i don't know huh actually i don't think they are but I looked it up, and I think the po it has, like, that same it's only a movie, it's only a movie type of poster thing going for it. Yeah, um, directed by David DeFalco, who really only did Backlot Murders that I know of. Damn, um, that's kind of weird. Yeah. But, uh, it was a film that was... Oh, it's 
dude, it's so funny. You type in Chaos 2005 in this fucking other movie with <laughs> Jason no. Statham and Ryan Phillippe and Wesley Snipes shows up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I guess yeah, I guess none of the characters are the same. I could have sworn like Sadie was the same name, but I, I guess I'm wrong. Um, Kevin Gage plays Chaos, who is, like, basically the Krug of the story. Now, most people that review this film, they seem to think that he's, like, the best part. I actually thought he was, like, mostly bad at acting. Um, but some of the other people I thought were pretty good. And I, I think that, like, there's certain aspects of it that are, like, really interesting. Like, that there's a lot of gore in it which wasn't really the case in the first Last House on the left. Um, but I think it's pretty decent. I don't think it's as good as the original, but I thought it was I thought it was sufficient. I gave it a 7 to a 7.5 out of 10. Um, and then I watched Corpse Bride, which is a animated film. 2005 uh it's sort of a what do you call it a stop, stop motion. motion claymation type thing yep. um and basically this dude um is like about to marry this girl but uh he gets um like whisked away to this underworld where there is a corpse bride and he, she is interested in marrying him, but he wants to date his real bride, Victoria. And there's like this family dynamic. It's pretty good. Um, I've always heard that it's like, you know, oh, this is uh, the night, like a better, like like as good as Nightmare Before Christmas. And I don't think that at all. But um, I gave it like a seven and a half out of ten. You know what I mean? Yes, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, and then uh, after that, I watched The Red Shoes, a.k.a. The Lie. Um, no, buddy. I get to make this joke. This is The Pink Shoes. No! <laughs> um, what the hell? What? That's so weird. My rate review has seven dash five dash ten when it should be seven point five out of ten. It, instead, it's like a date. Oh yeah, I I actually noticed that the other day and I was mad. I'm that not you sure did why that. that happened. Um, it, it happened because you did it. Anyway, um, I thought it was like pretty good. Uh, there were some scary parts in it. Um, I can't really remember much else. I gave it a seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I watched Wallace and Gromit: The Curse of the Were Rabbit. Definitely one of the funner movies of 2005. I had seen this before when I was a kid, um, probably around when it came out. Uh, I might have even seen it in a theater for the drive-in. When did Chicken Run come out? I definitely seen that. Uh, what was? Wait, what's Chicken Run? Oh, Chicken Run came out in 2000. I see. Chicken Run is like another animated movie. I think it's done by the same people as Wallace and Gromit. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. But, I know what you but Wallace and Gromit uh, are a like extermination crew, but they and they like you know they like this town is like full of like these gardeners and people that are growing veg veg for the which is how they say it in the UK apparently um they, they they're growing all this veg and um basically they're try, they're trying to stop like rabbits and different things from from eating it and there becomes this were rabbit which is like a really big rabbit and it's up to Wallace and Gromit to like stop it um through like this experiment of a regular rabbit um but yeah it's it's really funny. Like, it, it's actually... I think this is much better than Corpse Bride. Um, it, the humor works really good. The animation is hilarious. It's it's really fun movie. 
uh, I gave that an eight and a half out of ten. Eight or an eight. Eight to an eight and a half. I don't know. I don't know. Don't ask me. Um, then I watched Incident on and off a mountain road from 2005. And this is just a simple um, movie where it's a Masters of Horror. It's the first episode of Masters of Horror. It's basically like a, a – I describe it as like the final act of a slasher film, like the whole cat and mouse sequence. But it's like interlaced with flashbacks of like how this chick became like a survival person. Um, the killer is Moonface. He's kind of cool. There's a cool cameo by Angus Scrim as well. Directed by Don Coscarelli. Gave it 7 out of 10. Uh, then I watched Dreams in a Witch House, which was 2005. Also Masters of Horror. Uh, this one directed by Stewie G. And it... What? You're stupid. Why am I stupid? Just, just go ahead, dude. Why am I stupid? He didn't. He would not appreciate that nickname. He do, You don't know him. You're not friends. You never hung out. Shut up. How do you know you wouldn't appreciate it? Because it's just like it's disrespectful. Oh. His name is Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Right. Yes. All right. Um, Stewie G. Mr. Stewie G. Um, directed Dreams and Witch House. This is the H.P. Lovecraft story. This. Uh, I think he's... Is he a writer? I can't remember. He he might be a writer or somebody working on, like, a thesis or something. Goes to this... Uh, ho rents out this house. Um, there's, like, a cool, attractive neighbor who has a kid that he starts being into. There's, like, this mouse thing with a human face. It's real creepy. Um, Lovecraftian stuff goes on. Uh, I really like this episode. I think it has good atmosphere. It's creepy. It's cool. I like movies set within like an apartment or like a like this guy's. I think he's like renting the attic or something. Mm. Um, really neat. I gave that one a seven out of ten. Uh, then we have Tobe Hooper's uh, Dance of the Dead, and this one is kind of a little weak. Um, it's set in a post-apocalyptic world, um, but, like, it doesn't really feel, like, post-apocalyptic, but then it does. It's, like, it's, like, a, it, you could tell, like, they didn't really have, like, a world in mind, and they just kind of did whatever. They didn't really develop the world. There's really annoying jump editing that just is supposed to make it look like, oh, this is post-apocalyptic future, this is futuristic editing, but it just comes off annoying. Robert England has a part in it. I don't think it's horrible, but it's definitely one of the lesser good masters of horror. I gave it a 5 out of 10. Right. Um, and then we have just one more here for this. God. <laughs> for this one, uh, we have 2001 Maniacs. Uh, this is a film uh, remake of 2000 Maniacs from HGL, um, I believe, right? Sure. Sure? Don't start asking. Sure. You know, don't. Why are you even asking sure. me that? Shut up! Uh, yeah, 2000 Maniacs from the good old Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, part of his Blood Trilogy. Uh, also including Blood Feast and 1965's Color Me Blood Red. Um, but yeah, this this is a... There was a sequel to this too, right? 2002 Maniacs or something? No, buddy. It's called 2001 Mani Maniacs Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, no. It's Field of Screams. Oh, never mind. Yeah, it was originally called Beverly Hellbellies, but... It, they changed it to Field of Screams. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Bill Mosley's in it. Oh, yes, of course. Um, basically, these uh, teens go to, or like college kids go to this weird town uh, on their way to spring break uh, where they do all this Civil War um, sort of honoring type thing and the townsfolks start picking them off one by one they're like sort of these confederate villagers um and you get the sense that they might be um up to something 
bad. Um, it's sleazy, trashy type of movie. Um, I thought it was, I think it's fun, but it's like sort of like a once every while type of watch. I don't think I'd run back to this one. It does have Robert England and Lynn Shea in it, and they, they're actually pretty fun off of each other. And it has Giuseppe Andrews. And actually a really funny cameo by Eli Roth as well, as Justin, his character from Cabin Fever, which is hilarious. Right. Um, <clears throat> I remember when I first seen this movie and I seen that, I was like, what the hell? I, it like blew my mind. I was like, I thought that this movie came out before Cabin Fever. So I was like, I thought that this was the birth of that character. But yeah. Why did you think this came out before Cabin Fever, buddy? Probably because I watched it back in 2005 and didn't really have high access to the internet. No, buddy. It's because it's called 2001 Maniac, so you thought it came out in 2001. Are you trying to be a smartass? No. I, I was just I was just trying to be funny. Um, but yeah, it's like a six and a half. Six, six and a half, somewhere around there. Right. Alright, your turn. Yay! Yeah. Okay. Um, now... In total, I only have six moves, so maybe I shall read off three on this step and a three on the next step. That is what I shall do. So, first up, and I don't recall this movie much at all because I watched it a long time ago, but it was The Roost from 05, uh, which is Ty West's directorial debut. Um, I remember I dug it, but I, it was pretty low quality that I was watching it on. I think I found it on YouTube, and uh, it was kind of hard to see, but uh, so that kind of interfered with it. I would like to see it in better quality, but uh, I thought it was a fun film. I like it was set on Halloween, and that's kind of, that's really all I really remember about it, though, because it's been quite a grip since I watched that, so I think I gave it like six and a half or seven, though. Then I watched May, um, as per Prep for Slumber Party Massacre, as we are doing May for the month of May. Uh, May is from 2002, and uh, I've given my opinion on this movie many a times before, but I love it. I think it is a masterpiece, I think it is great, I think it is perfect, um, which, of course, we shall talk about it uh, a little bit more once that episode comes out. Uh, it was recorded about week and a half ago, so that'll be out sooner than later. <clears throat> so check it out. And then uh, the third one that I watched was One Missed Call for 2 from 05, which I brought up a little bit ago. Uh, this movie is, uh, I will say I've never seen the first One Missed Call. Um, I think I saw the shitty American remake before, but I have not seen this the first one to this and I know there's a multitude of these movies but so I wasn't familiar and I think it does have a little bit of continuity to it so there's that but it was okay um I had a few creepy moments it's kind of funny you watch this movie and you realize how much these movies are influenced by Ring Ringu whatever um because there's legit scenes in this that feel like they're taken right from Ring and stuff like that and you know even Juwan in a way so it's just funny how these movies all kind of rip each other off. Um, I think you brought that up before. It's kind of like the sla how slashers all took from each other. That's kind of what the Asians did with their uh, horror, like supernatural films. But yeah, this movie, I kind of felt a little bit low budget at times and um, the ghostly effects weren't that great, but it had a few creepy moments that I did like. So I gave that one, I think I gave it like a seven out of 10, but as I said, that is what I will talk about on this app, and then when we record our next step, I shall talk about the other three on there. So that's all I have. Okay. Um, okay, so I guess, uh, do you want to review In the Earth first, or do you want to get into the um, drive-in? I think we should get In the Earth out of the way. Okay. <clears throat> That's fine. Um, go ahead. What do we have for In the Earth? All right. In the Earth. It's a good old Ben Wheatley flick, and I've been meaning to curl up to a good Ben Wheatley, Wheat Wheatley flick. So uh, this was quite a treat, I must say. 
All right, it says, as a deadly virus ravages the world, Dr. Martin Lowry embarks on a mission to reach test site ATU three two. Two seven A, a research hub deep in the arboreal, arboreal forest. The arduous journey, guided by Park Scout Alma, is set back by a nighttime attack that leaves the two bruised and shoeless. Oh, does it ever! When they run into Zack, a man living off the grid, they gratefully accept his help. Zack's intentions aren't exactly what they seem, however, hair. and a path out of the forest and into safety quickly fades as the lines between myth and science blurs. Yeah, that was a very long thing of letterbox. So I need to start reading IMDb again. But yeah, so that is the movie. It mainly kind of takes place in like the woods and you're following this girl in the sky and yeah, they wind up shoeless and this guy goes through a lot of foot trauma that becomes kind of comical towards the end. And then they run into some dude in the woods and uh, he takes them to safety, but then he like is kind of a weirdo and has weird intentions. And then some other stuff happens and some seizure stuff kind of goes on and that is the move. So uh, what do you, well, whatever you can remember, what do you think of this move? I mean, I remember a lot of it actually um even though we watched it a while ago um so I, I thought right away that like the world that it was set in was kind of like mysterious because i'm like okay um it seems like there is something like like obviously it's a reference to the pandemic with like the, the covid type screenings but doesn't it feel like there's actually something like bigger wrong Yes. Or yes. no, did you not get that vibe? Yes, it does. Um, it definitely does. It definitely does. And I thought that was cool. Um, and then I thought, like, when they go into this, the forest and stuff like that, I, I did feel like something bad was going to happen. And then when they meet the, the guy that they meet, I thought that was, like, great. And I was like, oh, well, this is starting to get good. Mm -hmm. um, and then it later it goes on to be not as interesting to me uh like once they meet up with the other scientist woman that the dude has a pre-existing relationship with um i just felt like it wasn't as interesting to me and i feel like although it was like Jeremy seemed to like it more than me and, and he was talking about how like cool the sequences were filmed and stuff like that with the strobes and things like that. I'm like, yeah, I mean they look it looked cool, but I just thought that the story just really didn't have like all that much going for it um that I was interested in. And he's under the impression that there's a lot more going on than me or him realizes, which is possible. Um, but I just didn't find it as engaging to really care if there was, like, deeper stuff in the movie. Um, I don't know. Like, it, it, I think that it's about, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's obviously has some environmental, um, mm. type of things going on it in it and uh i think that there's probably a little bit of like searching for meaning type stuff going on in there because of like how into the each like how each character um like what they're doing i think that there's like this sort of um searching for purpose type thing or meaning I uh, yeah sure um I mean honestly I didn't remember the film a whole lot and I wasn't that into it to begin with I I did think it was shot well uh and you know I think he is trying to say some things with it but I just found it to kind of be slow and I'm with you where when they meet the guy and then some stuff kind of goes down within that. Uh, that's when I was like, yeah, it's taking a turn for the good and I'm going to get into it. But then it kind of like slogs down again a bit for me. And then it kind of pumps up a little bit more, but then it like kind of 
like tapered away. So I did not put too much brain power into any underlying meanings, if I'm being honest. Mm. So. All right. Um, yeah, I think that there was, you know, visually it was pretty cool. Um, sound design was really good. Uh, there were some intense moments in it, and I did think that like when it was being a straight horror film it was very effective because it was very creepy and unsettling and unnerving but then it goes away from that again and becomes just a movie that I'm not really that interested in um and yeah I thought that it had it had some decent highs but overall I thought that it was just okay. it was it was good I'll say it was good but not nothing great yes me too. All right. Any boxed reviews? Um, what? <laughs> we don't have to do boxed reviews anymore if you don't. I hate to. doing. Well, I did like them when you were the one doing them. I don't understand. It just doesn't seem that hard to me. But... It is because I don't feel like looking them right, up. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So in the earth here, which is the new Ben Wheatley film. Um, I got a review here, um, positive review from the filmmaker Joe Lynch, who of course is um, the guy who directed Wrong Turn 2, as well as Everly, as well as Knights of Badass, them, even though he kind of removed himself from that project, um, and Mayhem. He's also Adam Green's co-host on their podcast, The Movie Crypt. Uh, he's, uh, Joe Lynch, uh, his favorite movies are... Um, I do follow him on Letterboxd because, you know, it's cool. Um, favorite film, Schindler's List, Dawn of the Dead, Die Hard, Something Wild, Something Wild. Oh, it actually is called Something Wild. I couldn't read Oh, my mom, <laughs> my mom and I used to love that movie. I couldn't read the t the first word because it's all like, the characters are stylized and I'm like, Something Wild. Oh, uh, see, so you... being Something Wild. That's a good move. Um, and, uh, recently he, he's watched Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, Brad Reanimator, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and 40 Guns. Um, so yeah, he says, that was a trip, man. Probably the tensest and doomiest movie I've seen since Prince of Darkness. Had that dreadful b vibe from start and zigzagged eff effortlessly. And it's funny, which was welcome amidst the mist of eco mayhem and psychotronic slasher tropes. Always love Wheatley's left of center approach to his storytelling, from the story and the performances to the edits and the camera work and sound design. Mansell's score is fantastic. Yeah, there was a nice, really cool synthy score mm. there. Um, okay, uh, this one is from Lucy. And she, her favorite stuff is Gone Girl, um, um, Amelie, Amelia, A M E L I E. Uh, Amelia, buddy. Amelia, Nomadland, and oh wait, those are recent activities. Sorry. Uh, favorite films. It follows the Social Network, Donnie Darko, and Titanic. That is a weird mix, but I'll go with it. Um, Lucy, her review, Sundance film number 13, so she watches Sundance, uh, oh, that did absolutely nothing for me. The plot was impossible to get into or follow along with, and the stakes never felt really that high. It had some occasional cool shit going on, but I still didn't care that much, and all the scenes in between were just dull. Think Annihilation, but think Make It Pointless. Bummer. So, yeah. That was a yes. 1 out of 5 review, and Joe Lynch's was a 4 out of 5 review. So, go ahead and give your review. I already gave my review, buddy. It's your rating. Oh, I see. Um, I think I gave it... I'm at, like, a 6.5 on it. Yeah, I'm at a 7 on it. I think it's a 7. I see. All right, and I guess let's go ahead and get into our drive-in experience. Uh, of course, this was the 2021 
my, um, Riverside Drive-In April Ghouls Marathon that usually happens every April. Of course, last year it was canceled due to the pandemic, which is sucky because if they would have waited like one more month and did it in like May or something, you know, things were kind of able to uh, do things again, I think. But um, yeah, so uh, go ahead and give a rundown on that. Oh, I see. Um, so yeah, we went to the Drivity Drive-In and they played some moves and it was freezing out like it always is, which sucks because I swear every April it is like 80 degrees the week before and I'm like, yeah, it's actually going to be hot out. And then the actual week comes and it's like 50 degrees and raining. It's always raining as well. So that was lame, but um essentially night one was pretty cool um they did sleepaway camp they did the slumber party massacre they did peace as and they did edge of the axe and they had special guests felissa rose who you guys may recall we already met back in august and uh, Dave Sheridan, who, if you guys don't know... Who played... I didn't even want to meet at first. Yeah, I don't get what your deal is. You're like, you, like, hate everybody. But he played Special Officer Doofy, reporting for duty. And he also played in Victor Crowley, of course, along Phyllis Rose. So that was cool. And the Devil's um, they were both. Yeah, I told you that. You didn't know that. Um, but yeah, that was cool. They were both there, um, and I think they went to out by Mahoning Driving as well the next day and did some sort of little outdoors convention there. So I think that's why they were both here for this. But that was pretty cool because Riverside's never really gotten special guests. Um, like Tom Savini and Doug Bradley have showed up, but they've kind of showed up just as like people there to watch the moves and not really sign autographs. So. It was cool that they got these two there, and uh, Felicia Rose is probably one of the nicest, most inviting people, I think, that I've met, so always happy to meet her. Um, you and I both got Victor Crowley signed, and we got a picture with both of them. Uh, Dave was super nice, too, very friendly, very talkative, and that was fun. We did not have to wait in line as long as we did when we went to Mahoning, because uh, I think we were lying for like four hours for her there. So they kind of moved it along a little better here. Um, but we did that. And then they played Sleepaway Camp. And what do you think of Sleepaway Camp? Well, hold up. What? I feel like we glossed over some things. What did we gloss over, buddy? Cause, like, you add stuff then. <laughs> well, I mean... Um... You know, let's just talk about how it was like to be back. You know what I mean? That that that's something that we look forward to all the time. You know. Okay, buddy. Well, you asked me to give a rundown, not about what it's like to be back. But <laughs> well, yeah, I meant, like back... let's give our thoughts on the event. We can yeah, go the event step was... by step. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Some input would be nice, <laughs> but the event was great. We were happy to be back and. Yeah, we love it there. Uh, they always have, well, the staff is really friendly and nice, and they're all super into it. And they always make specialty foods, which we wish Mahoney would do this because they're kind of lackluster on that. But these guys actually make, uh, you know, special foods, not just the typical popcorn and hot dogs. They actually make these ridiculously big tacos that have no business being called a taco because they are huge. And uh, they make, like, halushki and soups and pizzas and, uh, what? oh, Nashville hot chicken. That They started making that a few years ago, and they keep bringing it back, and that's always really good. And we love to eat. So a lot of times we're more excited about the eating than the actual event. Mm -hmm. And we arrive there, and we're like, we're going to eat all the foods. So We overeat every time. Yeah, I feel really sick, like, afterwards, and but it's worth it, and we spend money, and we, you know, give them, I, I, I'm okay with giving them my money, so. Yeah, we, like, want to support the actual location. Mm, um, but, And yeah, they're not, so like, we, super overpriced either, like, no. you go to, like, a movie theater, and it's, like, you spend 10, what, like, $15 for a drink and a popcorn, here you mm -hmm. can get like literally 
uh, a chicken basket with fries and cheese and chicken strips for like seven bucks and a drink for like what like three or something or even less depending on what kind mm-hmm. you get and you know their taco I think was like what six bucks seven bucks and, but it's like massive like it's literally like a huge burrito yeah. type taco you can get a whole pizza for like eleven dollars or something and it's, you know yeah. pretty decent size like um pretty much can feed both of us yes we smash it <laughs> but yeah and the food's good too like i said it's not like crappy or anything it's actually they put effort into it and they have a pretty big staff uh there that you know helps out so that's cool um of course they had their like creepy classic people and they're selling movies and then they also started bringing in this um tent that's outside oh it's called time bomb toys i believe uh and they set up outside in a little tent and uh they sell stuff like you could buy license plates that say beating you and uh they got like air fresheners or whore hair themed and pins of course and stuff like that and they had some shirts which you and i both bought a sleepaway camp shirt so which yeah, it's a pretty, pretty nice sleepaway camp shirt. I I didn't think that, um, you know, I I like getting at this point. I like getting shirts that, of stuff that I don't have shirts of. Like, I obviously have like a couple of Halloween shirts, like a couple of Jaws shirts, like some mm-hmm. of the popular stuff, like a couple Friday Thirteenth shirts. So it's like, I want to get stuff that I don't have shirts of, like uh, Phantasm or mm-hmm. sleepaway camp. So. Yeah, it's a pretty cool shirt. Um, got Angela on it. Some some cabins. It's like black and red, which is always a cool color design. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that was cool. Um, I think it was twenty five bucks, which is a very fair price for like a reseller type shirt. Um, yeah. I, I my price range for shirts are usually twenty to twenty five bucks. I think is like fair. Anything mm-hmm. over, I'm kind of like, eh. Um, right, right. But yeah, uh, we went when we first got there. It you know it felt good to be back. It was a little cold out. I was kind of bummed that it was like going to be a. It was looking like it was going to be like a rainy or cold weekend. Which, uh, I think the last one we went to was actually like the nicest. But for the most part, most of the time we went, it would always rain. Um, and so what else we then we went and got in line to meet those two and if there's one thing i could say about this is like you know how people have like handlers um or like managers or whatever they are they, they're they like basically the people that take the money hmm. yeah um in my opinion i feel like sometimes those people get like too involved yeah and like so we go to meet um Dave, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he was really cool, and we actually talked to him a little bit, and I, I was talk, talking about how the male penis in Victor Crowley was, like, really funny, and we talked about we, we get we mentioned that we watched it with Adam and stuff like that, and he talked about it and talked about how, like, Adam called him when the, the distributor wanted to remove that scene and stuff like that, and he told him he got to keep it in. And then he was telling us about on Scary Movie when they basically made the movie more extreme knowing things were going to get cut out. Like they intentionally amped up stuff that they didn't plan on having in the movie anyway. Um, Which was cool. It was fun to talk to him about that. Then when we go to Felissa, um, the person there with her, I assume it's her friend, who takes the money and stuff like that and, and sort of... Uh, mediates everything Mm -hmm. like she was nice and fine and everything but it's like whenever I we were talking to Felissa I was you know telling her oh like we want we got to watch you know she asked if we liked Victor Crowley and stuff like that and um, we basically I told her that we watched it we got to actually see it with Adam and stuff like that and um, the her whatever you know the person that takes the money like interjects and is like 
oh, is he still single? And, like, you know, they start talking about him and stuff, which is fine. But it's kind of like, hey, like, you know, this is sort of – like, if it if I had that been the first time I had met her, I might be a little bit disappointed that I didn't really get to talk to her because this, this – uh, other person sort of interjected into the conversation and like sort of took it over and then we got, went on to something else and didn't get to talk about that you know mm-hmm. and that's just something I noticed it didn't really bother me specifically but I could just see that being a negative for other people um, whenever you have sort of these um, handlers or whatever that, that are supposed to be there that help they sort of interject a little too much I think sometimes yeah, and she made it that? she made it like more stressful too. It was like I felt like she made it into a bigger thing than it had to be. Like and she was trying to be like inviting and being like come in, come, come up guys, like we don't bite and stuff like that and she, she called them like celebrities and she like made it more like nerve-wracking than it really needed to be, I feel like. Yeah, like she I was nice, she, she wasn't a bitch, but Yeah, like she was fine as a person. I just think she was too involved. Like, yeah. it's like she, she like, was inputting herself into all the conversations that were happening, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, we don't even know you, you know? Right. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I'm sure she was just trying to have fun and stuff like that. I don't think it was, like, ill intent. I just think that, like, that could be something that would deter people from having a positive experience or meeting someone. And I, I haven't met a ton of people, but I have met some people that had those type of people. And I'll say this, like when we met Sean, or sorry, when we met Tom Atkins, like Sean Clark was like great. Like he sort yeah. of got in the conversation a little bit, but he like was back enough to like let you know that like, hey, this is your moment. And then, you know, if I have anything to say, you know, we could talk, you could like talk to me or later or like i'll interject towards the end he just felt very like smooth with his involvement in the whole thing and and Mm -hmm. i actually kind of wanted to talk to him you know it made me want to talk to him (laughs) um and then uh, obviously like darcy like took the money and stuff for joe bob and i actually wish she would have like interjected more because like i i felt like I felt like she was one of those people like, hey, if you want me to be part of this, I will. But if not, I'm just going to be quiet. But it's like, I, I actually kind of wish she would have, like, been more part of it. You know what I mean? Because she's part of, like, the Joe Bob thing. And, like, yeah, I would consider track. her one of the people. Like, I would consider her one of the people to meet almost. Right, exactly. <laughs> like but, like, maybe back then, you know, when we met her, that I don't, she, she was, like, I don't think she was as big as she is now part of it. Like, yeah, she's been part of it from the beginning, but that was like, I think that was coming off that first season there or the, not even the first season, the first 24 hour thing. And then the like specials. So it wasn't even like the Mm. weekly thing yet. Um, I think she's much bigger now, but, Mm. uh, that was, that was a, I actually think meeting the guy, was like more fun than meeting Felissa. <laughs> the guy. Yeah. Buddy, you're you're dumb. You don't even know who you met. Well, he was uh He was funny and he taught he like you could tell he like was interested to talk, you know? Like he didn't it didn't come off annoying to him. I always think like if Jeremy was famous, he'd be like the biggest prick in the world. Yeah. That would ne- <laughs> like ne- please Lord gods out there never give that guy fame. <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. Um but you know, I was thinking about him and and like some of the other people and I'm like, man, we've had like such good experiences meeting people. Like nobody's kind of been a douchebag. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. It's all been good. I can't say one that was like bad. Yeah, the only one that, like, we didn't even meet them, but, like, I guess Corey Feldman. Yeah, which we dodged because we thought it was going to be bad. <laughs> yeah. Now, so. like, even Ari was, like, you know, first Jason, which, you know what, I was thinking about this the other day, too. How did his mom know he would be... The... I'm hanging up the call. <laughs> what? I'm not. Re- I'm not recording anymore. I quit. Why? 
Because you're dumb. Quit saying that joke on here. No one thinks you're funny. I'm just saying, like, if you were going to name your kid first Jason, you better be pretty damn confident that they're going to play Jason first. His name isn't... Buddy, come on. But, um, you know, first Jason, he was, like, really cool. Yeah. And, yeah, he was super nice. And everybody always talked about how he's, like, a douchebag and stuff. And I'm like, it couldn't be further from the truth. Like, the guy is awesome. Mm-hmm. I like him. They just think he is because he, like, milks the the fame, but he's not doing it in a way that's, like, sucking his own dick. He's doing it because he enjoys it. Yeah, and it's like, who cares? <laughs> like, the guy was in an iconic movie. People like that about him. Like, why, why, like, that's, that's a free, comfortable way to live. You know what I mean? Like, you, like, and it's not completely free either because you still have to go to these appearances and, and meet these people and stuff like that, but... I'm saying, like, he has he 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 has a, a something that like why do people hate when people can have an easygoing life? You ever notice that it's like if someone has like an and you know like an easy income that makes their life significantly easier, like it's mm. like people don't like that. Yeah, but it's like why? Like, why can't we, if we all wanted that for everybody, if we all, like, were happy when that happened to people, I think the world would be a better place, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's like, yeah, this guy was in one movie, primarily, is why he's, like, you know, famous at all. It just so happens to be, like, this major, iconic cult movie, and, he, yeah, he was in, like, one scene or whatever, and, yeah, he's able to get, like, $20, $30 per person that he meets at conventions all year long and I'm sure that makes it to where he doesn't have to have a nine to five job and he can live life like a little bit more easy or maybe he does have a job and this is just all bonus income that makes him be able to live way more comfortably like why is that a bad thing and even that like he didn't even like he gave us a bunch of stuff for just twenty dollars yeah like he, he like, gave us free us shit like basically yeah like we were when i started talking to him i was like hey i want to kind of support this guy I was like is there something here i could buy and he was like you know there's this stuff this stuff and there was a cd i was like yeah, i'll buy the cd you know mm -hmm. and he i bought the cd and um we asked for a picture and and uh, and we got him to sign our friday 13th tapes and uh, I don't know if you bought anything or not. I can't remember. Well, yeah, I, um, because he was like, yeah, I'll sign the tapes and take a picture and you can have the CD all for $20. So then since he did that, I, like, bought one of his shirts, too, and that was $20 hairs for one of those cool first Jason shirts. Yeah, he, like, signed the CD, the tapes, took a picture, and, you know, met us all for 20 bucks. you know? Mm -hmm. And he was like... He didn't like have it. Didn't it seemed like his set prices were like negotiable. Like he was just like, yeah, you know, just being a nice guy. And yeah. uh, I, I just, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't, I don't have this like hatred for people like mi quote unquote milking things. It's like, well, they did that though. Like they, they were the person who was in that, and it became iconic. So it's like, why, why don't they deserve it? Like it's just like. It's luck, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm sure that it took some sort of level of something for him to get that role. But, like, why... Even if even if you're lucky and, and are... You know, inherit money or, or you know, it's gifted to you or, or whatever. Like, why, why is that a bad thing? Right. And it's like... I could see if they were, like, a douchebag, right? It's like, oh, this guy's mm. just milking this and he's a complete douchebag. But it's like, why can't somebody... Why, why is it a bad thing for somebody to capitalize on on fortune that happened in their life? And benefit from it financially? I don't understand. Like, what is the bad aspect of that? Like, even if we're going to say, oh, he's just milking it. Okay, what is bad about that? Yeah, and with that, I mean, with that, you don't even have to give him your money if you don't want, you know. I know, but like I'm saying, like, okay, <laughs> like, let's say you're going to argue that, like, oh, that guy's just milking it. Okay, what is, what is bad about milking it? 
nothing is bad. It's just like, I mean, it's like funny to people, I guess. I know, but it's like, I feel like it goes from being funny that it's like, oh, this guy was in one episode of Friends and, and he is making a living off of it. That's funny. To like, people actually not liking them because of it and actually like dissing them all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Like, people are mad about it, and I would only be mad about it if they were a dickhead. Right. About it. It's like, are you mad about like, it? Because, get over yourself. because you don't want to see people have an easier life than you? Is that why you're mad? Because that's what it sounds like to me when I hear people say this stuff. It's like they're upset that they don't have something as easy to make an income as that. Right. Correct. And I just think it's lame. It is. It um, is very lame. So anyway, we we met them. It was fun. It was cool. Bought a Felicity Rose shirt or a uh, Sleepaway Camp shirt. Um, then we went and watched the first feature, which is, of course, Sleepaway Camp. Uh, I thought we thought it was going to be Slumber Party Massacre first, but they must have switched it up to, like, let Felicity leave early or something, because I know she had, like, more conventions in PA and mm -hmm. stuff that she was doing the next day. Yeah. Um, I actually think she was here much shorter than she was in the other drive-in. Yeah, because she was stayed throughout... I think up until like the third movie or something to sign autographs at yeah. the other one or this one she left right after the first one or I don't know if she left when it started but <laughs> I think this one there was more people there early mm -hmm. yeah like, they she must have been signing like during the day she they posted in the group I noticed um when we were like on our way that uh Felissa got there at like 4 p.m. so I think everyone showed up there at that time yeah probably all right so um what else uh yeah so we watched sleepaway camp it, it's an absolute classic one of my favorite horror movies um every time the dude the cook <laughs> the baldies dude every I time know. he's on screen dude we just cringe and we're just like how in the world does this guy exist but I'm so happy he does. Yeah. Because it's just, like, hilarious. It's absurd. I just like, yeah. I like the old black guy being his, like, companion. Like, they're too young to understand what Joel's thinking about. And he thinks it's like a sitcom type of slapsticky joke. Yeah, you just expect a laugh track to be like, ha 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 Yeah, like, ha ha. And, uh... Man, somebody should put a laugh track on that. Yeah. That would be funny. Ooh, that's a good idea. Um, I'll probably never do it, but <laughs> it was a good yeah, idea. You won't. Um, but yeah, the, the, the movie, I think that, like, the thing I like about Sleepaway Camp, obviously it has that such iconic ending, right? Like, that's an iconic, memorable, one of the best horror endings ever. But, like... I always think of Sleepaway Camp being good for having all these little moments. Like, you have... You have the fact that this pedophile dude is, like, just openly pedophiling. Mm hmm And he also, like... Like, he literally... Like, the very first moment he's alone with a kid, he drops his pants. He's, like, pulling <laughs> his dick out. You know what I mean? Like, the very first moment. He's alone with a kid. And I'm like, Jesus, like, I, how long was this guy working here for? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I hope this is his first summer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you have, like, the, the iconic kill with him with the with the hands up in the air, like, ah, screaming and stuff. Um, and then you have, like, the icon, the, this sort of, and it's all absurd things. It's like, you have this weirdo, relationship between like the camp owner and like this this camp counselor girl who's like clearly like 30 years younger than him mm -hmm. and that's she's weird. like and she's like one of the popular girls there so she's not like a weirdo and then she's all excited she's like i have a date and he's not even like this hot guy he's like this creepy old dude yeah and then you have like this other dude who's like i remember that kid being a pretty damn good swimmer like him <laughs> 
Like he's yeah. great. Like he's just this we- weird dude and, and stuff like that, and like all muscly and stuff. And I, you just like him. And then like Ricky, like the way that he acts is like so funny. Where mm-hmm. he eat shit and live. You know what I mean? Like it's just like all this. I'll fucking kill him and stuff like that. You know, he's like all pissed off and stuff. He's great. And then Judy is just like a like this extreme cunt for no reason. <laughs> and she's just like and like some of the stuff like just things that are said. Like she's like, Are you embarrassed you have no hair down there, Angela? And I'm just like <laughs> like <laughs> so of the time because it would be like quite the opposite now. That yeah. They would say, you know what I mean? And it's like, <laughs> and then you have like the the hair dryer or the um hair curling curling. What do they call those things? Curling hairs. Cur- curling iron, buddy. Curling iron up the vagina thing. Yeah, and that, w- watching it this time, I I was thinking about like she's putting it up her hairy vagina. It's gonna burn. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just it's thinking gonna like hair. Yes. It's probably gonna smell Bush. too good. Do we? Um, but, and then, like, there's just all these, like, uh, the absurd ant, right? She's just like, what is this? What is this ant? <laughs> what, like, is this real life? That's, what is that's going on opening. here? Well, no, that's not even the opening. Well, the opening in itself is, like, absurd, too, but, like, the ant's, like, your introduction to the future, and you're like, what the hell? And then she's just gone, and you never see that character again. Yeah, like, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, and the performance is just so out there. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's just, there, there's so many great moments in it. Like, even, like, when the the kids are, like, on the dock, like, asking the girls to get skinny dipping, and they're like, they're like, no. And he's like, whatever, come on, boys. <laughs> and, and, like, they're all... <laughs> See all their butts? <laughs> It's like, that'll show them. We'll go skinny dipping naked together with all us dudes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Good move. Just, uh, it's, a, it's a favorite of mine. I just love it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's awesome. So what do, what do we watch next? Slumber Party Massacre. Which I had just watched for my Slumber Party Massacre podcast. So that kind of, yeah, that kind of sucks because I did just watch it. But I, again, that's another fun slasher that has been growing on me. I feel like I've watched it a good bit in the yeah, past. This is the second time we've seen it in the drive-in. No, it's not. What? We've never seen this movie, buddy. I know, but I said it on twenty-two shots once, so. I know, but I'm correcting you now. That was a lie. I just think we're just gonna live with it and say that it happened. No, buddy, because I had never even seen it, and you're on 22 shots lying, saying how we saw it and had a great time, and I'm like, what? Okay. What? I said okay. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, but yeah, Slumber Party Massacre, I think it's a pretty fun slasher. Again, much like Sleepaway Camp, it kind of flies by, uh, and that's cool. Uh, I like the... I like the idea. I like the slumber party aspects, and uh, you have, like, the boys creeping in on them, and them talking about just typical girly stuff, and uh, the kill hair is pretty much not a big secret or anything like that, and I think he's actually kind of kind of scary in a way, but it's a good move, and I, it reminds me, it feels very much like Halloween with the outside shots. It looks like it was filmed in the same exact town. <laughs> is Halloween, so I kind of dig that, and just a lot of the stalking shots feel very Halloween-inspired, so I like that. I like when a girl eats pizza off dude's back, and um, I think it's in this movie where they open the fridge, and girl's just, like, dead in the fridge, and then they close it, uh, so it's a pretty fun, it's a fun move. Like I said, it's uh, definitely growing on me more and more the more I watch it, and like I said, it flew on by. I do wish I didn't watch it so in recent time because it probably would have just been funner. Like, Sleepaway Camp, I could watch anytime. This movie, it was because it's like so new to me. It's not like a class act where I feel like watching it all the time, but I still had a good time with it overall. So. Yeah, um, 
I think it's a pretty good um, movie. It's it's a fun little slasher. I uh, I never really have like a ton to say about it, but I think that it's I think it's good. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we had pieces. Mm-hmm. And again, we kind of just saw that one, I believe, in the drive-in as well. We saw that in Mahoning. Was that that wasn't last. Was that two years? Was that the first time we went there? Um, uh, or yeah, was it last? I think so. no, it was last year. I think. Either way, it felt it, it's been recent. Um, but pieces. Uh, that's one that I think is good. It has a lot of good gore and blood, and uh, it is a good movie. It's got some good music in it, but I'm not as crazy about it as other people, and I wish they would stop playing it everywhere, because it's not that great. It is not that great, but it's it's still fun, uh, but I I can go the rest of my life without seeing it in the theater or drive it again if I had to and not be sad about it. Yeah, to me, it's like, I don't love the story. Yeah. I think it's actually, like, painfully boring. The kills are some of the best in horror history, though. So it's like you kind of like mm-hmm. that about it. Like, I mean, dude, they are so good in this movie. Yeah. So it's like that does elevate it. But, like, I just find the story, like, so painfully dull and, like, the investigation aspects. It's very much a Giallo film. Yes. Um, Characters are, like, boring and weak. But... Mm-hmm. I'm a, I give it like a seven, seven and a half. Yeah, I do too. Like, I don't think it's horrible, but it's just not, it's not fun like the first two. It's not like a fun slasher. It kind of feels out of place. But, mm-hmm. and then, I mean, lastly was Edge of the Axe, which I can honestly say I watched the first maybe 20 seconds of. Uh, probably like the first kill, opening kill in it, and I fell in nizzle for the rest of the move. And then I woke up and my buddy was like, time to go. And then we went home. So, Unfortunately, I didn't see that, and I've never seen it before in my life, so I can't give any input because I don't know anything about it, unfortunately. Um, and I'm sad because I, I did want to see that one, but, you know, it happens. I get nizzly at night. Uh, besides uh, Night 2, uh, one of the films there, this was my favorite uh, part of the thing. Oh. Because it was it was a movie I'd never seen before. And it actually was pretty good, considering... I know Arrow just released it on Blu-ray. But mm. considering, like, I'd never really heard of it, and it's a 80s slasher, that's usually a sign that the movie's not going to be too good. But it actually was pretty solid. And I thought that the... Uh, like, the killer was scary. Uh, the story was, like weirdo like kooky uh especially like by the end when you get to like the final reveals and stuff like that who the killer is and uh there's like this weird technology aspect dealing with computers which of course is cheesy and and clearly dated and fake technology um but overall i I thought it was a really fun movie i definitely recommend checking it out at some point all right i'll have to give it an actual watch all right. And yeah, that was that wrapped up night one. We drove back home. We didn't stay to Hoot because we only live like an hour away. So we drove um, back home, had our nizzles. Then the next day we got together once again and embarked on a journey once again out to the Riverside Drive-In. And uh, for this night, um, kind of a weird night. I was, yeah two werewolf films uh that being the howling and an american werewolf in london and then you had halloween three and then you had mausoleum as the last feature so felt kind of random but still a fun night nonetheless um what did you think of the lineup um yeah i mean the howl or uh the american werewolf in london i i really liked that movie but Because we had just seen it in the theater probably, like, a year ago, Mm -hmm. it just didn't really do much for me. Mm -hmm. And, honestly, like, tonight was, like, very rainy. It, it like, rained almost the whole night. And our battery died at one point. 
Right. My battery died. Yeah. At one point. And we got it. We got it. Jumped. Yeah. And then actually, your battery died again. <laughs> yeah. And then you had to bring me a battery, and it was a horrible night. But thank you for the battery. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, it's, it's a good movie, but I just, it did, it didn't really, like, it wasn't, like, a great, like, memorable experience, because it was, like, you know, I'd just seen this in the theater, which was a more memorable experience, because that was, like, the first time I watched the whole movie, Mm -hmm. and uh, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, I mean, both The Howling and and American Werewolf in London. Uh, American Werewolf in London I actually really enjoy, so it was... I enjoyed watching that one because it had cool atmosphere. Uh, The Howling, I'm not a big fan of in general, if I'm being honest, and it's not really... It just doesn't really grow on me either. Like, I keep giving it chances, and it's just not... Not really my cup of tea. I do think it has a good werewolf, but it's not something that I like to run back to. Um, werewolf in London. I unfortunately I watched this one on Blu-ray just recently too because I forgot that they were playing it at the drive-in. So that's kind of again kind of sucked with the timing, um, just because I just watched it. But I I have fun with um, that move, but I hate John Landis. But um, so yeah, both those movies, The Howling and London, uh, were just okay to see at the drive-in. Uh, I still had fun, but they weren't really my favorites to watch, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. I see. Yes. Um, okay, uh, The Howling, uh, I honestly, like, I couldn't see that one as much because the rain was coming down a lot. Oh yeah, sure. but I I did enjoy watching it. Like there are some creepy moments to that movie. It's never been one of my favorite movies ever, though, and uh, it's not even close to my favorite werewolf film. But it was kind of cool to be able to see it in the theater since or at the drive-in since it is like known as such a classic. Um, okay, and then it was what Halloween three? Yeah, which was my favorite experience. Um. Like I had mentioned on the show before, I'd only seen Halloween 1 in the theater and Halloween... I've actually seen 1 in the theater and drive-in. And then the only other Halloween I've seen was Halloween 18, which I've actually seen in the theater and the drive-in as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Weird. So I never, I never saw any of the Rob Zombie ones or any of the ones that came out when I was a kid. Um, which I think I would have been alive for part six, seven, and eight. Uh, I would have been alive for part for H two O. I would have been one year old, and then Resurrection. I would have been five years old. Isn't it weird that I watched H two O? Like I remember watching H two O at a neighbor's house, like when I was a kid, like after playing board games, but like you weren't even barely alive. Like you were like sucking on your mom's titty. Uh my mom didn't breastfeed me, buddy, so no, I wasn't. I'm just saying. Well listen buddy, I also remember watching H two O with a bunny on my bed. It was just like in the two thousands. <laughs> I'm just saying. I was like out there living life, running around and you were like couldn't even wipe your own butt. You probably couldn't either. I bet, like, <laughs> like I bet you would just. I bet you're one of those gross kids that went to the bathroom, and then your parents would be like, "Did you, did you <laughs> wipe and clean yourself up?" And you're like, "Yeah," and then your butthole just says like poop falling out of it. What? I'm just like telling it. That's what I bet. Dumbass, trying to comment. Don't come at me. Like, did don't tell ever, me about living did, life. Like, <laughs> would you ever be on the toilet and be like, "I'm done." What? I mean, probably through the house. I'm done. Uh, probably when I was a little. Somebody needs to wipe your butt. Yeah, yeah. It, like when I was a little, John. You're like a really five, little. Six, John. Seven. No, but what? No, no. <laughs> All right, buddy. You're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, watching Halloween three was really cool. Um. 
Even the rain actually like helped with the atmosphere a little bit. It was weird yeah, watching definitely. it in like not October, but it was still mm-hmm. really fun. And then um, we were a little bit nervous about the car battery dying again, um, and we didn't want to be annoying and, and get these people to, um, you know, come charge it up again. And I th- I think I had to work on Sunday yeah. as well, so yes, we just we went did. home. Yeah, we we barely. I think we've only stayed for like all four moves on both nights like one time yeah well normally we do three on each so i was anytime we get like five of the six or what seven of the eight i think it's a success Mm -hmm. i just hate driving home and the worst thing i just hate when the sky starts starts going from black to like that light blue color and then i hear birds singing and i haven't gone to sleep those are they're not singing yeah, they are. They're like, good morning, no, motherfucker. They're chirping. You... Is that what your mom they... used to tell you or something? The birds are singing. Maybe. Don't, don't make fun of my mother. But they say, What do you mean? You never see a movie where they're like, oh, the morning birds are singing. They don't sing, though. They are, buddy. Like, it, that, it's like, choo, 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 choo. They probably like don't. I don't think they have vocal cords. That will. No, but I think you need vocal cords to make those noises. Well, all I know is you're wrong. Oh. Anyway. That's it. That's it. So then we went home, went to sleep, went to work, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that's uh, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, and be on the lookout because we have another one coming right at you. Yes. Peace. Bye.